Inspired by the life of the savvy and ambitious Colombian businesswoman Griselda Blanco comes a new Netflix original limited series. Griselda tells the story of a devoted mother who, with her lethal blend of charm and relentless savagery, creates one of the most powerful cartels in history. Witness Sofia Vergara's captivating transformation into the godmother of the underworld. Griselda, now streaming only on Netflix. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Before My Time. I am your host, Gelsey Laurie, and this week, our co-host, producer, and friend, Matt Kelly, is going to take the lead and talk to us about the Munsters. <laughs> We're here to entertain you, we'll sing your songs, for good times, the best times, you can't go wrong, we'll two-step, a new step, it won't be long, when the Dixieland is up playing, soon you'll be swaying, so come on, sing along. All right, Gelsey, are you ready to learn a little bit about my favorite scary sitcom family? Is it Everybody Loves Raymond? They're so scary. I love the Munsters. More so, this may shock people, more so than I love the Addams Family. Okay. I like the Addams Family in films. Mm -hmm. I like the Addams Family in comic book form. Never really connected with the Addams Family as a, as a TV show. That makes but sense. But the Munsters, yeah, the Munsters love them. And we're recording this, at the time we're recording this, I just watched Rob Zombie's new Munsters movie, which is a prequel. It tells the story of how the family came to meet each other. And it's getting a lot of shit on the internet right now. And I just want to remind people that it is a PG movie for children. <laughs> and... That it is more enjoyable than, say, like Hotel Transylvania or what I think has really been bad, the Adams Family animated movies that have come out in the last I like couple of years. I tried to watch one of them and I got like 10 minutes and I was like, no, but you shut your mouth about Hotel Transylvania. That shit is fire. <laughs> well, then you're going to love this. The Monsters soundtrack movie. to the third one is amazing. I used two of the songs that Tiesto actually did in my spin class for sprints. And everyone's like, that was great. Where's that go. last track from? And I'm like, Hotel Transylvania. What do you know about the monsters? What is your knowledge of the monsters? We'll start there. I really don't know much. Like I know the family members and okay. I know the theme song because I do really love it. And then also I loved the song Uma Thurman that Fallout Boy did that sampled it. Can we admit that the monsters theme song is a strong like if we it's did so a top good. ten greatest TV show theme songs, it would be in the competition, I think, for yeah, sure. It's so good. I mean, again, to tie into an old episode, very surf rocky. I was just thinking that. I'm like, it is very surf rocky. <laughs> oh, yeah. You see like the beach clad girls dancing to it. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. So the Munsters was an American sitcom depicting the home life of a family of benign monsters. The series starred Fred Gwynn, who played Frankenstein's monster, known as Herman Munster. Ivania DiCarlo played his wife, Lily, who is a vampire. And Al Lewis played Grandpa, the somewhat over-the-hill Count Dracula, who longed for the good old days back in Transylvania, because they're in Los Angeles throughout the run <laughs> of the great. show. And then they had a college-age niece, Marilyn, who is literally attractive by all conventional standards and the monsters constantly remind her that she's just an ugly duckling and she'll get to her attractive phase one of these days <laughs> playing against the 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 conventional beauty and then obviously everyone knows butch patrick as their werewolf son eddie so the concept was that this was produced by the creators of leave it to beaver mm. but almost as a satire of an american suburban life taking like the entire wholesome family stuff that they were doing with leave it to beaver but then just throwing that on monster movies instead uh and it creates that. like a really charming juxtaposition 
So when I was researching for this, one of the things I did was I listened to, I have the complete Monsters TV box set and I have uh, some of the Monsters movies on Blu-ray and then was listening to the commentary tracks that were available on those. And it's mostly Butch Patrick because unfortunately a lot of the cast is no longer with us. Mm -hmm. Butch Patrick said something that I really, really, really loved uh, where he said, you know, the big difference, we were airing at the same time against the Adams family. And he goes, the way I always saw it was that the Adams family was a bunch of people who wanted to be monsters, but the monsters were a bunch of monsters who wanted to be people. Mm. And like, that was the big difference. Yeah, yes, yes, um, yes. I love that. And I'm like, that really does like summarize it because it is the Adams family just looks like regular people, but they're very macabre and crazy. Mm -hmm. And the monsters actually are look monsters. like the horror movie monsters, but they just like live a normal life and go to a normal job mm -hmm. and like are just trying to pursue a regular American suburban dream. American life. Yeah. So uh, it was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for Best Series. It lost to The Rogues, which we're not doing an episode about that because no one remembers what The Rogues the hell was. That is. <laughs> Yet it won. <laughs> See, not always telling. Awards don't always tell the winners. 100%. Uh, it did run for two seasons. 70 episodes in total were produced. It was canceled, however, by CBS when it was losing to Batman in the ratings. I didn't realize there was only two seasons of it. Yeah, there's only 70 episodes. It's, I them. think the the popularity... So this is something straight from the Wikipedia, but it's accurate. The, pop, the popularity warranted a spinoff series as well as several films, including one theatrical release and several more attempts at rebooting it. So it's one of the things that it never, like fully went away like they have been trying to keep the monsters alive for a really long time and personally not saying that i think the rob zombie movie is a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination but i think it's the best attempt we've ever had at kind of capturing what made the original series work that all of the stuff in the middle failed mm -hmm. to do i am not one for i think you and i both talked about like we are not big fans of canned laughter in mm -hmm. shows but similarly to how it kind of weirdly works in the Flintstones it really weirdly works in the Munsters too like there's this this element of like it's almost part of the shtick it's almost part of the satire is totally. like we're mocking television totally. by having it in there. Yeah, that's the Flintstones really does feel like that. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think the Monsters feels that way too. And it's a very referential show. Uh so a prime example, like, and I'm gonna just read this straight from the wiki, but I I couldn't have said it better myself. The show satirizes the typical family sitcom formula of the era with a well-meaning father, a nurturing mother, an eclectic live-in relative, a naive teenager, and a precocious child. The members of the Munster family even reference all of the sitcoms that were on while the TV was on TV at the time. Case in point, episode 45, Operation Herman. Lily tells Herman that he has to have the father-son talk with Eddie. Because a thing like this is up to the father. Anyone who's watched Fathers Knows Best for the last nine years ought to know that. In which Herman Monster replied, all right, but Donna Reed always handles these types of things on her show. Like, <laughs> I love that. They're just like, yeah. And then in another episode, uh, Grandpa describes My Three Sons as being a delightful show about crazy mixed up families that are always having weird adventures. So like, it's just very, it kind of... As someone who's constantly has uh, Gilmore Girls on in the background while he falls asleep, it kind of feels like the writing of Gilmore Girls, too, where that show is just like pop culture reference after pop culture mm -hmm. reference. Now, the development of the show was actually first suggested by Bob Clampett back in 1943 in a series of cartoons. It didn't take off, though, because uh, the ideas were kind of similar to something that was already being pitched by the Rocky and Bullwinkle writers. But once it got pushed over to like some TV writers, they wrote a pilot script called Love Thy Monster, and executives believed that this could work as a live action. Some still wanted it to be animated. According to one of the writers, he outwardly said, we sort of stole the idea from Charles Adams and his New Yorker cartoons. Uh, but since we were being produced by Universal and they own the Frankenstein and Dracula character for the movie rights, we decided we could utilize their characters instead of having to use the Adams family. Um, part of this is actually why the Adams family show became a thing was they saw that they were producing the monsters. Mm -hmm. And you know how like, we've had like Armageddon deep impact, or we've had like those situations where like two of the same ideas come out, come out at mm -hmm. the same time. 
this was very much like, you know, they're taking the concept of the Adams family and making a show about it. Let's give them the original Adams family on an opposite channel to kind of compete. Both of those shows only lasted two seasons. They were both very short lived hmm. shows. And again, like I said, I think the, the monsters was the better of the two. Uh, but it is just, it's such a charming, fun show. That's what I love about it, right? Like, I love that it really does capture this, like, idealistic, leave it to beaver family. But they're just monsters. They're classic universal monsters. And the humor is very, like, vaudeville inspired. Mm -hmm. I would say that the entire show works because of Fred Gwynn. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm, I know I'm saying his name wrong. Uh, and I feel terrible about that. But his like he plays Herman Monster with such absolute charming sincerity in every single way. And it reminds me of, you know, one of the later roles in his career before he passed away. You know, he was in Pet Cemetery, and he was in My Cousin Vinny. I was just going to say My Cousin Vinny, which is one of my favorite yeah. movies. But again, he makes that movie work because he is so serious with the material like he doesn't do, do like what? winks and nods what was that you just said <laughs> to <Oops>. you <laughs> he's <laughs> like, great no he's and he is so good as herman monster he even was he was appearing in a separate show simultaneously he was also on a show that i have never watched uh which was car 54 where are you are you familiar with mm -mm. this show at all no i've never even heard of it I only know of it very vaguely because in the 90s, they tried to make a film version of it that I remembered being particularly bad. Uh, Can all be winners. <laughs> these, these TV show to yeah, movies. Yeah, but both Herman and Grandpa were regulars on that show and played off of each other a lot, which was kind of part of the charm was like, hey, these guys already proved that they have great comedic chemistry. Let's put them in another situation where they can kind of scheme uh, on different stuff. At the end of the day, the show is exactly what you expect it to be, right? Like if you have seen any one of these shows, like Grandpa and Herman are right there with like Barney and Fred or like any of the other like two characters badly influencing mm -hmm. each other to do dumb things. And that is like the real charm of the original show, The Monsters, right? Then it gets canceled. It goes away, but they make a movie and they make a movie called Monster Go Home, which is released in theaters. And if you would love to know more about it, we actually just covered it on Horror Movie mm -hmm. Night. But I will tell you a little bit about Monster Go Home. It was the first time that the monsters were in color. So oh, they, that's a pretty big thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. So they produced this, this colorized movie where Herman gets a letter letting him know that he was related to a very rich relative who has passed away and he has now inherited his castle and his kingdom and he's going to be a lord. Okay. Uh, so he starts walking around wearing a cape that says like <laughs> Lord Munster on the back and they go on a cruise ship. But like another relative is trying to kill Herman because he wants to own the castle. And the whole movie honestly feels like they just took three separate Munster episode scripts and, and, and smashed them together. Yeah, because the first 30 minutes is a bunch of boat gags. The second act is like a whole lot of like the monsters in high society gags. And then everything hinges on like winning a car race and they rebuild the Dragula. And that is like the last act is just the race. It's probably so why I didn't it, do it very good because there's not like coming. a big over no. arc of. Not at all. Yeah, it it was. When did this come fine. out? So this came out in 1966. Okay, so it's still pretty close to the show. Yeah, so the show was canceled in 1966. So oh, wow. it basically, it was fresh on the heel heels of its cancellation. Mm -hmm. They made this movie. Okay. <laughs> the thing that's kind of fun about this movie is that it performed so poorly at the box office <laughs> that they stopped shooting a Get Smart movie that they were also planning to release because they were like, oh, oh like, well, this, this doesn't is work. tanking. Is, yeah, <laughs> this this isn't going well. 
and they just scrapped filming. The other thing that I will mention, because I just love getting a chance to mention this, it when it hit the drive-ins and the, the drive-in movie theaters, it was uh, part of a double feature with The Ghost and Mr. Chicken starring Don Knotts, which is one of my uh, my friend Lauren and I watch it every October. Oh. Uh, oh, it's okay. one of our like October traditions. It's my favorite Don Knotts movie. Okay. Um, but this was not the last time that the original cast of the Munsters came back together. Uh, many years later, in 1981, they made a made-for-TV movie called The Munster's Revenge, uh, which did reunite Fred, Ivana, and Al. So Grandpa, Lily, and Herman, they they recast um, Marilyn and Eddie for this. So because obviously at this point, those actors were full-grown adults mm -hmm. um, at this point. And it's just fine. I have a copy of it that came with my um, my box set, but... You know, it's it's the beginning of what I referred to as like them really trying to like capture the energy of the monsters to the best of their ability and and failing yeah. because there are certain things that we've talked about this with the Muppets, right? Trying to bring the Muppets into 2022 doesn't work you could produce a show in 2022 but it feels the muppets feel like they always need to be in the 70s you know what mm -hmm. i mean like it just feels like that or or even further back I mean, whatever like just, muppets most wanted is one of my favorite movies but anyways proceed no muppets is, I'm, and i'm listen i'm not saying anything against i that, know what but you I mean think though there's this the muppets, essence missing there's an essence missing and i feel like at at its core Whenever we tried to take the Muppets away from like doing a vaudeville stage show mm -hmm. and like putting them in other contexts mm -hmm. of doing like a movie or doing like like it's charming and it works like but it's not the same. Like I know Disney tried with the like office style docu series where they're like behind the scenes on Miss Piggy's talk show and it's not the same energy as like doing the vaudeville show. Right. And then Disney Plus did like a series of YouTube shorts that they were trying to produce together. And it's like, no, you just the the humor of the Muppets works best in the framework of they are a vaudeville act doing On a stage, vaudeville off stage thing. kind of bits. Yeah. 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 And I think the Munsters are kind of that same vibe of like the more that you keep them locked into this like 1950s, 1960s, like father wife and 2.5 children like the nuclear family the more the show works and as you try to like bring them into the 80s or bring them into the 90s just something doesn't quite click mm -hmm. so once again they tried uh and this i believe i can't find any direct information on this but um i'm pretty sure that this was an attempt at doing a tv movie that would hopefully become a TV series. Fox aired a television movie in 1995 called Here Come the Monsters, which just that title alone sounds like, hey, we're going to produce a Monsters TV show soon. Uh, and on that particular show, we had Kristen Taylor, um, who you know for playing Marsha Brady in the Brady Bunch movies. Uh, she was in The Craft and The Wedding Singer and Zoolander and Dodgeball. I'm pretty she's sure she's married. Ben Stiller's yeah, wife. Yeah, that's Ben Stiller's wife. Yeah. I do love her. She was Maryland. I didn't realize that uh, she was in so, that as well. Because I know, yeah, it's like Brady Bunch. Is yeah. Kind of her. Oh. And weirdly enough, Herman Monster was played by Edward Herman, um, <laughs> who you would know from Gilmore Girls and The Lost Boys and a, and a bunch of other really great projects. Uh, and it is, again, just fine. Like, it is it is what it is. It's a, it's a nice attempt at bringing the monsters back. Uh, it did not work. <laughs> unfortunately and then i guess they tried again with the monsters scary little christmas which i can find absolutely little to no information they like, but they did recast this doesn't exist <laughs> yeah fox produced that as part of their 25 days of christmas so they were still trying fox i feel like fox somehow got the rights to the monsters and were really giving it their best shot i did skip over one thing during the 70s, there was a Saturday morning cartoon called The Mini Monsters. The only person to repraise the voice acting was Al Lewis for Grandpa. Uh, and it was just a cartoon. 
about Not, the monsters. You sound so excited about it. That makes me uh, definitely yeah. rushing to watch that next after this. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm curious, have you um, ever seen, sorry, this kind of going back to the, um, what would you call it, original show, and it's shot in black and white, you said. Have you ever seen yep. the set in color? And do, I ask this because for the Adams Family, I do know if you Google the Adams Family set, what it really looked like in color, because it was shot in black and white, it's all pink. Because the shades yeah. of pink gave a better shade of gray when it was black and white. And so it's like they're filming these like dark things with like this like pink set. And you'd be like, wait, what? And I'm just I'm curious if they kind of did the same thing for the monsters. I, I haven't looked for that specifically. I know that you see the interior in color in the movie. I don't Which know if they, they would had then to recreate make it. it dark colors. Yeah. Well, that's like when the Adam's yeah. Family movie came out, it wasn't pink. It's you know, the, the point is to make it look dark yeah. and, and it's just I know that um all of their costumes had to be redone because the costumes were in different colors for the camera. So I think like I did read that say like Eddie Munster wore like a pink suit in the black and white series, but then mm-hmm. yeah. when they shot the color movie, they had to like make it a black suit um, yeah, for only, him to wear. I'm only finding pictures so, of the Adams family in color. I think it's so the only other big thing that I wanted to bring up tied to the monsters is something that I still haven't actually gotten around to watching, but I've always been curious about, which was Mockingbird Lane. I have not watched that. So in 2012, they shot a pilot that was a dark reimagining of the monsters um, for NBC. Uh, While they did a special screening of it, it was like a one night only screening and it was pretty well received. It was not picked up to become a series. What made me interested in this series was a few things. Eddie Izzard played Grandpa what? in it. Jerry O'Connell played Herman Munster, which I love. Portia De Rosa from like Ally McBeal and Arrested Development was Lily Monster. It was created and written by Brian Fuller, who has created all of my favorite shows that didn't succeed. Um, so he wrote Dead Like Me. He wrote uh, Wonder Falls, he wrote Pushing Daisies, he wrote Hannibal, and he wrote American Gods are like all the shows that he was the creator of. He is considered one of the best television creators with the lowest track record of things actually succeeding. And then Brian Singer uh, directed it. So it was really all of these brilliant minds coming together to create this show that, you know, this 40 minute attempt at a pilot, which again, was pretty well received. And there's only a pilot, you said? Sorry, I'm like looking this up. They shot a pilot. And that's it. So NBC, this looks so good. NBC <laughs> aired, yeah, NBC aired that pilot and the pilot for Grimm as like a double mm. like Halloween themed series. Grimm worked. And then this was the quote from NBC. Uh, we decided that it just didn't hold together well enough to yield an entire series. While it looked beautiful and it was original and creative, it just ultimately didn't come together. It just didn't ultimately creatively work. We felt we felt great about the cast, but we tried to make it not just a sitcom. We tried to make it an hour, which ultimately has more dramatic weight than a half hour. And it's hard to calibrate that much weirdness versus supernatural versus family story. I just don't think we were able to get the mix down right. Which I do agree with, like, the Munsters should never be an hour long series. Like, it is, yeah. the whole backbone of it is a mocking of the traditional sitcom. Yeah. It should always it should be exist that. as a traditional yeah. sitcom. There's, yeah. yeah, there's some things that I feel like when they try to make them too modern, reimaginative, some things don't work. And it, it's funny, it made me think of this too when you were talking about how. Like this only sits well in the black and white sitcom format of the 50s, 60s, and the way that the Muppets sit well in the 70s. That's why I think the Brady Bunch movies that they made in the 90s, I think they did so well is because they kept that concept of this family living and stuck in the 70s in the 90s. And it's, the 90s, it was really yes. funny, but it, it instead of trying to make it like a modern day modern, you know, Brady Bunch, it was like, let's have yeah, them can't... stuck there. And it makes it funny, but it's it's because that's the only world that they work and that it makes sense. Yeah, I think that, that that's no, that's exactly it. Like, don't try to make the Muppets hip and cool because kind of part of what makes them hip and cool is that they're not right. You know, like, like they, they are such a relic of a, even in the seventies, mm-hmm. like the vaudeville live show was such a relic mm-hmm. of like, 
an entertainment format. Yeah, so. and I love I love when they're creative. I mentioned this on our last episode of this show. We did uh, the Salem Witch Trials, and at the end, we were talking about our favorite witches, and I brought up Bewitched. And the movie that they remade in the early 2000s with Will Ferrell and Nicole Kidman, the reason I like that one so much is because the story of that film is that they are rebooting the series of Bewitched. And Will Ferrell plays an actor who got cast as Darren, and Nicole Kidman gets cast as Samantha – but she really is a witch in real life. So it's it's a nice thing. It's like a way to keep those things kind of true and alive instead of just trying to be like, oh, we're just actually redoing the concept and putting them in today's day and age. Because it you gotta there's a reason they worked when they came out. No, 100 percent Sorry, my friend literally just was texting me about the Rob Zombie remake. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Uh, so Rob Zombie, we'll, we'll do a very quick breakdown of this. Rob Zombie, uh, in 2022, just two weeks ago, by the time this episode drops, um, made a movie, The Monsters, that dropped on Netflix. Uh, and Rob Zombie is a diehard Monsters fan, uh, so much so that his biggest solo track is Dragula, about uh, Grandpa's racing car, the Dragula, from the show The Monsters. He actually owns the original Dragula model. That was one of the things he spent a ton of money on. And a lot of people are coming down on this movie, uh, and their complaints are like, the movie looks cheap, and it's cheesy, and like it's weird, and it's too colorful, and it feels like a cartoon. And those are all the reasons why I liked it. I felt like Rob Zombie absolutely captured... like the cheesiness and the cheapness of it. And I like that it feels like he just made a, a set in his basement that looked like the monster's house and just had his friends come over and cosplay and reenact segments of monsters episodes. Like it, it is, it's charming enough. It's not the best thing that I've ever seen with the monsters, but it is so far from the worst thing that they've done with the monsters brand. I'll check it out. I'm just saying go into it with an open go into it with an open mind, y'all. But that is where we're at right now with the monsters. Will we see more? Who knows? I still to this day want someone to just green light Mockingbird Lane so I can I do see too. a whole series. You had of me it. at Eddie Izzard. I was like, I'm so you've you've got me. What would you do if you had the ability to sync minds with your best friend? A partner? Maybe even a stranger? Would you share the deepest part of yourself with them? I can already read your mind. Then what am I thinking about right now? You're thinking about how much you want people to support our Kickstarter for our first feature film, Sync. You're so right. If we raise the money, we can make an amazing sci-fi thriller about mind syncing and toxic relationships. Support women in film and check out our campaign now. Just go to kickstarter.com and search Sync. That's S-Y-N-C or click on the link in our bio on social media and follow us at Femme Regard and at Sync the Movie. Mm, Femme. Okay, Matt, I'm going to flip this a little bit. So you always end our episodes asking me a question and I am going to ask you a question. Uh-oh. All right, what do you got for me? Okay, of all the TV, say sitcoms, cartoons, whatever, what is your favorite remake of a TV show into a movie? remake of a TV show mm. into a movie. I finally know what it's like to be on this side of it because I'm like, oh, I know you're oh. like, ah! I mean the cheating answer. Tell me if this doesn't count. Cause I feel like this is cheating a little bit. Would the Muppets movie from 1977 no. count? No, okay. no, 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 no. Okay. So, so this has to be after an extensive period of time since the show's off the air. It can't it's be like a movie not, tie just, in to the, to the yeah, show. Like, yeah, I want like a full – they took a show and remade it like it was big in the 90s, i.e. The Little Rascals. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So this is this is not like the movie's a continuation of the show, but this is – we are starting from scratch. We're taking the, the groundwork that was placed before us. Hmm. I mean, you did mention the Brady Bunch movies in this episode, Gosh, which those so are good. those are really good. Huh. I'm going to just – I didn't mean to tie – I'm going to have to do a very quick Google because I feel like there's one that I'm forgetting. And if I don't at least look at a list of options, I will be very upset. Like, and I'll be texting you at like three in the morning and being like, no, I changed my answer. Now you know how I feel. Like literally you say stuff and I'm like, I know I have a better answer than this. And I'm like freaking out right now. Um, well, while you look that up, I will tell you mine. How about that? Um, I would say I do love the Brady Bunch. I did mention Little Rascals. That's great. But I think mine's going to be a tie between 
the Adams family. I just grew up with it. I think it's such a beautiful reimaginative and it's I do think it is better than the show. Um, I also wanted to be Wednesday Adams when I was like three years old. She was my goals. And then my second one would be the Flintstones with John Goodman, Rosie O'Donnell, Rick Moranis. Like it's just gold. Like taking that cartoon vibe and the way they brought it to life was so fun. Adam's family is a really good answer. Like that's a really good answer. It's a really good answer. I know I'm really good. Like I know what the fuck I'm talking about. All right. So looking at this list that I was able to pull up, the only other one that I can think of that I would put in the same category as how good Adam's family is. Because Adam, the only thing with Adam's family is that it, it was other franchises as well that be before it was that and i'm actually very excited to see how wednesday comes out which was supposed to be I'm out curious. by now but now they moved it all the way to november which feels like a not Weird. great sign no <laughs> but, i know they're like but oh, I, shit. but i do appreciate because a lot of people were getting upset about the louise guzman casting until people like showed side by side photos of louise guzman and the actual original charles adams drawings of gomez and it's like no, that's a pretty good casting choice, actually. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be weird because this is kind of similar to your Bewitched one where it's almost too meta for its own good. 21 okay. Jump Street. Oh, no. Okay. I'll, I accept that answer. You know what I mean? Like 21 Jump Street, I think, did a good job of like... I need to watch that again. Completely re... Like doing a brand new modern version of an 80s show that most of us had never even seen by the time we saw the movie 21 Jump Street. But then like being very aware that it was ridiculous that they were making this movie mm-hmm. in the first place and like kind of drawing attention to it. And then, you know, you get spoiler for a movie that's over 10 years old now, but you get Johnny Depp and the other cast members of uh, 21 jump street showing up in the movie as undercover cops from the original. Like they're like, Oh, we're the original division. <laughs> just like, Yeah. Pop. I love when, I love when movies do like throwbacks like that, like little, yeah. So that's that's my pick. I, I feel like I won't be upset that I missed anything with you covering Adam's family and me throwing in 21 Jump Street. And we talked and about the Brady Bunch. And the Flintstones, the Flintstones and the Little Rascals. Honorable you know. honorable mentions are, are Brady Bunch and Little Rascals. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sure that there's some. I'm sure that. I, ooh. What about the tie into two weeks ago with the Twilight Zone movie count uh, from the late 80s? Uh, Sure. Fuck it. <laughs> sure. I make the rules here and I say, there we yes, go. it counts. Then, then also uh, that. But I'm sure we're missing some great ones. Do you think that there's any good spots for people to tell us the ones that we forgot about? Absolutely. If you have a favorite movie that was made off of a TV show that we did not mention, please let us know on Instagram. You can find us at before my time underscore podcast or on FaceTime. Just search before my time. We'll pop up. Say, hey, say, ho, say, this is my favorite movie made from a TV show. Also, while you're here, if you wouldn't mind just throwing us a five-star review and maybe a couple kind words that goes far, makes our days a lot brighter and it gets us to a larger audience for people just like you. Thank you so much for your support. Each and every one of you mean the world to me and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Network.